Back in the early 1970s, the party band of Southern California was called Mammoth. Mammoth comprised of Eddie Van Halen on guitar, Alex Van Halen on drums and Mark Stone on bass. You wanted to hear a cover of a great rock song, you could pretty much bet the band knew it and could play it brilliantly. It was rumoured at the time that they knew upwards of 200 songs. In 1974, they hired Dave Lee Roth as lead singer and changed their name to Van Halen. Now, the place to be seen back then was the Sunset Strip in Hollywood. But after being rejected by many clubs, the band finally secured a regular gig at Gazzari's Teen Dance Club. They played mostly cover songs with the occasional original sneaked in. But over the next three years, the band honed their skills, waiting for that big break. Stone left and Michael Anthony came in on bass and backing vocals. Now if you saw Van Halen back then, you saw a band growing, changing, getting more confidence, more assured each passing month. Then, I think it was around 1976, Van Halen started appearing in clubs like the Starwood, the Whiskey and others playing their own material. And all those years of playing covers, struggling to make ends meet, living on a dream, finally started to show dividends. The band were just so damn good. And the word spread like wildfire. Truly an eruption. Van Halen were on their way. But all these years, Eddie Van Halen had been developing his guitar skills. You'd often see him in those Hollywood clubs, watching legends like Harvey Mandel, Randy California, watching, learning, taking notes. Randy California had an impressive CV. A stint with Hendrix at 15, stepping in for Richie Blackmore, a sick Richie Blackmore, and learning the Deep Purple set list in three hours. And by the mid-70s, he was fronting his own band, The Legendary Spirit. California could play any style, any genre, and do it perfectly. Watch California play live, and you would see just why Hendrix thought so highly of him. Harvey Mandel is another unsung guitar-playing genius. Deeply rooted in Chicago blues, starting out he played with legends like B.B. King and Buddy Guy and Howlin' Wolf. And in 1968, Harvey released his first solo album, Cristo Redentor, an album so far ahead of its time it still sounds fresh today, 53 years later. It's a masterpiece of virtuoso playing and innovation. Harvey Mandel, I never tried to copy. I learned from the blues players I was jamming with as far as the technique and the notes. But I always had my own sound in my head. I mean, I heard the guitar the way you hear it today. And even the sound when Hendrix first came out. Long before I could even dream of playing that stuff. I knew where the guitar was going 20 years before it got there. I knew that eventually guitar technique would equal horn players and keyboard players. It was just a matter of training. This brilliant first album should have been the catapult to launch Harvey into superstardom, but for whatever reason, it just didn't happen. He had a brief stint with Canned Heat and even an audition for the Rolling Stones as they searched around for a replacement for Mick Taylor. Harvey, unfortunately, didn't get the Stones gig. That went to Ronnie Wood, but does appear on two cuts on the band's Black and Blue album. But to go and see Harvey play live was something else. He always seemed just that bit slightly ahead of what everyone else was doing in terms of technology, effects and technique. He was always pushing the boundaries. Harvey Mandel is often credited with being the first guitarist to use the two-handed tapping technique. For Richie Blackmore says he saw Harvey do this way back in 1968 in the Whiskey A Go Go. Take a listen to Harvey's 1973 album Shangrenade for extensive use of this technique. One reviewer at the time trying to figure out what Harvey was doing thought he was a jazz guitarist with very long fingers. It is often said that Eddie Van Halen started employing and developing the two-handed tapping technique after seeing Harvey perform it in the Starwood in the mid-70s. 
Eddie Van Halen has said himself that he first encountered a form of the technique while watching Jimmy Page playing Heartbreaker live in 1970. But wherever it came from and whoever started it, Eddie Van Halen then took it to a whole different level, allowing him to play those almost impossible flurries. And like Hendrix before him, he absorbed all those influences, blended in his own brand of genius and came up with something that was uniquely his own. Many years after Van Halen achieved superstardom and Eddie was revered as a guitar god, whenever the opportunity arose, he'd still go and see Randy California play, content to sit in the audience and just watch. Still a fan. Thank you for listening. Please go and explore the music of Harvey Mandel and Randy California because if you like great guitar playing, these two guys are absolutely fantastic and you can pick up bits and pieces of what Eddie Van Halen took from them and moulded them into his own style. Stay safe, stay well, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video. I will be doing a video exclusively on Harvey Mandel and going through some of his some of his great moments. So look out for that in the future. But most of all, take care.